Okay, just to give a brief um, introduction to the structure of this, um, each candidate will be able to give a two-minute opening statement, um, followed by a general question that all candidates need to answer. That'll be one minute. Um, then each candidate will get a personal question and be given one and a half minutes to respond. Um, after which, um, there will be one last general question. Um, each uh, candidate will have one minute. Um, and then we'll have two questions for the public. Um, and if you raise your hand to ask a question, make sure you specify who you're asking the question to. And uh, Sammy, our great chief of staff, is right here. She will be timing. Um, when you have 30 seconds left, she's going to raise her hand. Um, and you will be absolutely cut off at your time. <coughs> So, if you would like to each kind of begin with your opening statements, um, you can go to start. Great. Um, so hi everyone, uh, my name is uh, Christopher Bowman and I'm a uh, sophomore in Saybrook. Um, I'm a history major from Atlanta, Georgia and I'm running for uh, Yale College Council Vice President. Um, so I believe that I'm uniquely qualified um, to hold the position based on my experiences in student government. Uh, so last year I was treasurer on the freshman class council, um, so saw class councils. Um, this year I'm a representative on the Yale College Council and throughout both of those uh, I've been greatly involved in the Saybrook uh, College community. I've also been a part of um, two university standing committees, uh, the Provost Committee on Online Education uh, and the uh, committee looking at the new uh, residential colleges. This year as a representative, um, I was also uh, involved in advocacy um, for the creation of a sophomore seminar program first semester and now I'm looking at um, class schedule spacing um, during the school day. Now I'm running for Vice President um, because I believe um, that uh, the standards in the Yale College Council um, need to be raised. Uh, I believe that that means that we need to do more student outreach uh, and represent every voice on Yale's campus and not just um, a select few. Um, so as we've seen throughout this year, um, we've had a lot of really important conversations um, and uh, the Yale College Council hasn't always been there uh, in, in the middle of those conversations advo uh, advocating for issues that are important to students like um, policies on sexual misconduct and like race issues. And if I'm Vice President, um, I will make those a priority. Um, and as I said, I also want to um, raise the standard in general of the Council. So that means increased representative accessibility, um, making representatives um, really a part of their college. Um, that means, um, uh, that means uh, more transparency and communication. So um, emails uh, to the student body outlining projects that we're working on um, so that students actually know what the YCC is doing. Uh, and then finally, that means um, outreach. And I would do that through creating, uh, with council approval, um, a new position on the executive board, the director of student outreach, whose sole job would be to facilitate this outreach and to act as a point person or a liaison um, between student groups and between the Yale College Council um, to, as I said, ensure that no students on this campus get left behind. Hi, everybody. Uh, my name is Luis. I'm a sophomore in Calhoun from Sacramento, California. Um, and I'm running for vice president today because I'm really passionate about Yale, uh, and I believe we're facing a lot of tough issues on campus today. So I believe we can work together to face those issues, uh, but in order to do so, YCC must do more to empower the student voice on campus. Uh, so I have a few ideas for that. Uh, my resolution process idea will empower representatives to be better liaisons between the general student body and the administration through the YCC. Uh, my One Yale project can help create representation from groups that were really affected by the controversies uh, last October, last November, uh, by giving them a voice uh, in YCC affairs and on our policy agenda. Um, and I believe that YCC has done a lot of things well in the past, uh, but we've left a lot of others by the wayside. You know, today's divestment news is, is wonderful news, uh, but I don't think anyone can say honestly that YCC is the reason that those changes were happening. Um, so I think that in the future, for us to be truly representative of our student government, we must take assertive stances on issues that the student body cares about. Uh, for example, sexual misconduct complaints are still climbing, um, so I want to continue to advocate for that, along with empowerment of the LGBTQ community, improving our mental health care system, uh, working on academic projects like freshman advising that I did this year, um, and focusing on helping the middle class and lower income students here at Yale. Uh, so I've served on FCC last year and on YCC all this year, so I have the institutional know-how it takes to get things done, but my understanding of the issues goes beyond just that. You know, I know what it's like to be a minority student here at Yale. I know what it's like to be on 95% financial aid because that's who I am. And I believe that right now it's more important than ever that leaders of YCC can empathize with those students who are affected by the most important campus issues. And as Vice President, I will do just that. Thank you. Kevin? All right. Hello, everyone. I'm Kevin Sullivan. I'm a sophomore at Morse College, and I'm running to be your next YCC Vice President. So I guess I'll start off by saying why I'd like to be Vice President. Um, 
And it really goes to do, it really deals a lot with my unique background with the council. Um, I've been involved with YCC and its subsidiary organizations in a wide variety of ways. I started freshman year on the FCC. This past year, I was vice president of the sophomore council. It's also director of the dining task force. And I was also Morse representative on the Yale College Council itself. So these combined factors really give me an insight into um, certain deficiencies that might exist within the council and ways in which we can improve our effectiveness as an organization and ways in which we can better represent the student voices of Yale and better provide support and listen to groups that need, the, that need these resources. So first thing I'd like to focus on would be internal reforms within the council itself. Um, what I've noticed over the past year is that there is a <laughs> top-heavy dynamic in the council. There's a lot of concentrated power within the executive board. Um, a lot of the advocacy projects might fall on the wayside because we have so many projects coming in and only a few of them can be actually advocated to the administration. So I'd like to balance that by creating mechanisms within the council for representatives to almost provide a check on executive power so they can meet on their own. Um, I'd also like to see that voting is delayed by um, a week or so so that representatives can go out to their colleges and ask for their um, peers' opinions on ways in which they should vote. Um, all these things are just ways in which we can change YC intern internally and provide an external um, effect. I'd also really like to reiterate some points that have already been made and that the YC does need to reach out to student groups across campus. Um, this might include having peer liaison, having liaisons within the council to um, various student groups. Like we need to have liaisons to the LGBTQ co-op. We need to have liaisons to the various cultural houses that will attend their events. Um, we just need to have student group representation on the YCC that can often be disconnected from the student population. Um, and I'd also like to focus a bit on some of the larger projects that YCC. Oh, mm -hmm. Thank you. Yeah. oh it was three seconds. Uh, good evening. My name is Zach Wilson. I'm a sophomore in Trumper College, and I'm running for YCC Vice President. There's nothing more powerful as a changed mind. You can change your hair, your clothing, your address, your significant other, your leaders. But if you don't change your mindset, the same experience will perpetuate itself over and over again. Because everything outwardly changed, and nothing inwardly changed. Look at your life situation here at Yale and ask yourself one simple question. Are you happy? Are you happy with your friends? Are you happy with your classes? Are you happy with your professors? Are you happy with your administration? Are you happy with your student leadership? Is your life here what you'd like it to be? For a lot of us, unfortunately, this answer is no. I'm going to turn the situation around. I'm not going to sit back and moan and cry over about what happened, what went wrong, and who did what. I'm here to do something about this situation. Here's my plan. Transparency with administration. I want to have open discussion with Yale leadership to identify problems and then work towards solutions. Financial reforms. I have plans to eliminate the summer income contribution for students so that people can do unpaid internships and expand, um, expand their knowledge in a specific field they would want to do. STEM reforms. I want to improve grading transparency, midterm evaluations, mandatory course maps, and I want to work to hire more teachers, not more researchers. Cultural inclusion. I want to um, enact a program that creates more Native and Latin American courses, specifically in culture and history. And I also want to increase diversity among the faculty. I want to uh, change our work study program. I want to reduce our hours and increase, uh, increase the pay. Have more programs such as the uh, peer tutoring program. This will allow students to have more opportunities to explore extracurriculars and not be bogged down by so much work. Seminar availability. I want to expand the sophomore seminar program that my competitor has started, but uh, improve it into uh, more fields, such as the STEM program. Um, and I want to increase the total amount of seminars here. Yeah. Together, we can make a difference and take a step towards progress. Thank you. Thank you. Um, and I'd just like to clarify something that I left it at the beginning. Um, as we proceed with the debate, all vice presidential candidates will have one rebuttal, and that's 45 seconds, so you should last <laughs> So we're going to start with our first question, uh, which is for all candidates. The Vice President runs the Council and has responsibilities including deciding on and assigning projects. Could each of you please name two projects that the YCC has pursued this past year that you would like to continue moving forward, and name two ideas you have in specific projects in the future? Um, and first, um, we'll have uh, Luis and Kevin, so we'll move down the line this way. Yeah, so uh, I think the first one I'd like to talk about is this year, uh, there was a project to impl implement a electronic system of scheduling appointments with Title IX coordinators, uh, and the instance of, um, you know, sexual misconduct complaints and things like that. 
Um, I think that would help a lot, especially because um, you know, right now it's really nebulous what the Title IX coordinators do, how the UWC operates. Um, not a lot of students you know, really know how that all works. So I think that having this electronic system with information about who to go to, you know, how to start the process, things like that, what you know, implications are at each step would help a lot, um, as well as sort of reduce kind of the uh, pressure there is um, on students who maybe wanted to you know, access those resources who may, not, who may be nervous about talking about what happened. Um, Let's see, additionally, um, I would really like to work on my, my own project, uh, freshman devising. Uh, I think this year uh, we made some really good steps in working towards um, having a freshman advising system that works for everyone. Um, you know, people think that, um, you know, advising may not be one of the more important projects we have out there, but in terms of academics, um, it's one of the biggest things that influences their first early formative years at Yale, so that's another thing I'd like to focus on. Um. So in terms of projects that I'd like to see continued over the next year, um, I'd really like to see continuity with the major task forces that the YC has tackled. Um, in particular, the dining task force, which I was the director of this last year. So it's an area that really is sort of, um, that I'm very familiar with, and I think there's a lot of um, ways in which we can get stuff done with dining. We've t uh, we recently, I recently had a meeting with them, and we're going to be establishing a working group of, say, four or so students that will um, be actively engaging with Yale Dining Administration, as well as with the task force report and seeing an implementation of these um, of the recommendations. Also, I'd like to see an expansion of the LGBTQ task force report. Um, I think there's a lot of leeway that we can make with gender neutral housing, as well as um, supporting the co op, um, not just the co-op, but also the LGBTQ resource office and finding a new location that isn't the back of swing space. Um, in terms of new projects, um, I think what I'd like to focus on, um, I think like, uh, actually, um, it's not necessarily a new project, but again, it is like a big project this year. I'd like to see the elimination of the student income contribution. Um, it's something that the YC has not directly tackled, and it's really important to many students on campus. Um, two things I would like to continue. Um, one are the, uh, the seminar programs, specifically for sophomores. Um, what I would like to do is kind of continue that, expand it, and really expand it into different fields. And now it's very centralized on this, uh, very specific classes. Uh, secondly, I would like to uh, expand the professor mail program. Um, You've all got an email a few weeks ago about getting meals with professors. Um, unfortunately, that list only had eight or nine professors that were all centered in the humanities. There was no STEM professors there. I kind of want to expand that program and really get the, um, the outward mobility with um, talking to other professors. With regards to uh, new programs, I uh, <laughs> really would like to, uh, like, I, like I mentioned before with my, uh, my STEM initiative, to uh, kind of look in and try and raise the, uh, the standards, so to say, when it comes to STEM things. Uh, I know the, the physics curriculum had a 5.6 out of 10 approval rating, and the highest was the chemistry with a 6.3, which I just find unacceptable. You know, we should really kind of work towards that. And um, furthermore, I would like to try to... Add it to <laughs> Um, all right, so um, I uh, totally agree with Kevin um, in the importance of kind of continuing to push for the task forces. And of course, as I said, I worked on sophomore seminars, so I would want to push for those. Um, but uh, in order to bring new kind of topics into the conversation, um, I'm also interested in um, kind of uh, continuing uh, projects that were started this year on the low-income student experience and um, finding ways that we can strengthen um, systems on campus um, for low-income students, whether that means um, creating a peer liaison program, um, uh, making uh, this, these systems more transparent. Um, I'm also interested in um, continuing to push for more transparency in um, uh, final paper and exam return, um, just because uh, as an academics project, that's, um, I think, pretty crucial for students to, to understand. And then in terms of new projects, um, I would um, prioritize um, the creation of a diversity, tra uh, a, a diversity training during Camp Yale, um, similar to many of the other programming that already exists um, in Camp Yale. I think that's kind of a hole in that programming. And then review reinstatement procedures for mental health, which kind of fell by the wayside this year. Great, thank you. Um, so next question, um, each of will be the personal questions. Uh, each of you will have about one and a half minutes to respond. And again, we'll go down the line, but this time we'll start with Kevin. Um, you mentioned in your platform many initiatives to improve the internal workings of the YCC, ones which may go unnoticed by those outside the council. How do you intend to navigate the balance between internal work and projects designed for the student body at large? Sure. So this deals a lot with the role of the vice president itself. Um, the vice president, um, as an institution in the council, does often deal with internal affairs. If you, if we can kind of just take a step back and imagine, the president of the YCC is sort of the president of the student body. The, the vice president is more or less the president of the council. So I think the the role of vice president is you can it's unique in that regard in that there is a lot of involvement with um, YCC internally. So. 
My hope is that in starting the year off by, with um, these internal reforms, by balancing out the council, by making it, by balancing out the executive board, by delaying projects, by allowing representatives to engage with their colleges, we'd be able to have these external reforms um, be even more effective and be even more catered towards the student body. I think a lot of um, I think a lot of what my message here is that we need to support and listen to student groups um, across campus. And by allowing representatives to engage with them, by allowing, by creating these internal mechanisms for representatives to better engage with students, I think it's much easier for us to figure out um, how to better represent student groups that might not necessarily have the voice that they need in the administration. So I think, I think the best way to get, uh, the best thing to gather out of this is that these internal forms will have external ramifications. So they're not so even though they might not necessarily go noticed by the student body at large, the changes will be um, palpable once um, we start moving into these external projects and the projects that the YCC usually tackles. Okay. Uh, our next question is for um, your platform states that you're interested in reforming current work study programs in order to allow students to enjoy their full Yale experience. In your capacity as Vice President, how would you intend to do this and what steps have you taken to learn more about the policies currently in place? Sure. Um, so the current work study program is a uh, requirement of 12 hours of work for a base pay and that 12 hours um, is not flexible in the sense that when you are spending that much time at a job to help pay your way through college, you really kind of cut into other things. I've heard from multiple reports of students not being able to do extracurriculars with clubs, organizations, I am, I am sports, the ability to take harder classes because they don't have the time to do the work. I find that ridiculous. You know, if you're here for your college, you're here for your experience, you know, you should be able to have that. So some of the program, uh, the, the initiative I want to do is to cut back the mandatory hours and kind of get more specialized jobs in the sense of you don't need a bunch of people stacking books at the library and listening to headphones, like listening to music and walking around for a base pay and wasting 12 hours doing that. Why don't we have more programs like the peer tutoring program where you do less hours, get a higher pay, and then have the opportunity to then go out and explore. That's what college is about, it's about exploring. Um, so especially with this new influx of students that we're gonna get with the two residential colleges, there's gonna be more student, um, student jobs that need to be filled. And when these jobs need to be filled, I think they should be filled in a, in a way of uh, less hours, more pay, so that more people can get their, their full college experience. Um, as you say, that you would uh, want to give the Office of LGBTQ Resources cultural class statements. Uh, could you clarify what you mean by this? Um, and could you explain what steps you would uh, take to see this happen? Yeah, of course. Um, so this past year, um, the YCC had a um, fantastic task force um, that looked into um, LGBTQ resources on campus um, and that analyzed um, issues like um, the space that it currently has in um, swing space, which is um, far too small. Um, it's um, uh, it's kind of lack of monetary resources that doesn't really allow it to um, have as much programming um, and um, kind of the importance of uh, mixed gender housing for all students. Um, so tackle the wide range of issues and one of my priorities would be um, to continue um, pushing for these sorts of issues. So by saying um, to give uh, the Office of LGBTQ uh, Resources cultural health status, um, I mean really um, uh, ramping up those resources and providing it a space that um, it can use to really um, thrive even more um, and to um, really be a place on campus um, for LGBTQ uh, students to, um, to really congregate, um, to gather together, to, um, to attend programming, um, similarly to how um, the uh, pre-existing, uh, the uh, uh, Asian American House, uh, La Casa, um, the AFAM House, and um, the Native American Cultural Center um, exist now. Uh, and Linnaeus, in your platform you write that you would like to look at the streamlining requirements for reinstatement to lessen the stress on students applying for reinstatement. Many reforms to reinstatement have been made in the past year. Which of these reforms do you consider to be exempt, and which would you like to see undergo further reform? Oh, I'm sorry, I missed, I missed the word there. It was which of these reforms do you consider to be? A success. And which would you like to see undergo further reform? Okay, yeah, so I think that um, there are a lot of ways that mental health at Yale needs uh, a lot of reform done. Um, and when, why I mentioned the reinstatement procedures is because when someone is going through reinstatement, uh, it's a very stressful process. You know, they were dismissed for um, a sort of, you know, a mental health reason. Uh, and the last thing they want is a way to come back to Yale and in doing so, um, have to go through all these rigorous academic requirements, uh, do things like meet with X amount of, you know, get, um, you know, psychology evaluations and things like that. 
uh, that can put a lot of stress on the students when they're trying to come back. And those aren't really things that, when we're coming to Yale in the first place, that we go through. Um, so it's not really fair to put them through that a second time uh, when they're trying to come here, um, uh, be reinstated here. Um, in terms of the reinstatement reforms in the past, um, I, 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 to be honest, I haven't looked into those that much. I just know that uh, the reinstatement uh, procedures as they stand now are really rigorous. Uh, so I'd like to take a second look at those. Thank you. And lastly, we well, have a general question. You have one minute for a um, How do you envision the role of vice president, particularly as it differs from the role of president? And what steps have you taken to familiarize yourself with this role? And why do you think you are best equipped for this role of another in the council? Uh, for vice president, I, I see a role in which you are leading a group of directors and task force leaders in the sense that you're going to sit at a round table, you're going to have everybody there, you're going to talk, you're going to work through problems, you're going to figure out the best solution, and then move on through there. You're going to work with the president as well with the administration moving forwards and taking the initiatives and the plans that you build with your task force and build with the, <laughs> your leaders and then take that with the president to the administration, propose it, get it pushed through. Um, I'm sorry, can you repeat the second half of that question? Um, why do you think you're best equipped and what kind of stuff? Sure. Um, as some of you may know, I'm a member of the Air Force ROTC program. Uh, we meet twice a week. We do a lot of leadership training. We get drilled on discipline. Our honor code is integrity first, service before self, and excellence in all we do. And that's how I live my life. I'm, I'm equipped for this job because this is what I would like to do. Um, people have described me as uh, determined, um, and that, that's really who I am. You know, I, uh, I'm looking forward to this position if it so happens to be, and um, I'm going to do my best that I can. Thank you. We can go down the line. Um, so I see, uh, I think Kevin made the best analogy earlier by saying that um, the vice president really is um, the president of the council and so needs to kind of understand the council um, through and through, as long with its um, subsidiaries, class, uh, class councils, um, even residential college councils as well, to make sure that you always have those um, open um, avenues of communication between the different levels of student government. Um, now, I believe that I'm best for this job um, because I, uh, I do really understand kind of the tasks of the vice president um, in um, advocating alongside the president, um, in um, reaching out to students, um, in managing projects. Um, and I've done, uh, I've done my own advocacy work this year through my sophomore seminar program um, advocacy. And then I also um, understand kind of the inner workings of university um, standing committees, which the um, vice president helps um, make uh, nominations for. Um, so in terms of steps that I've taken, um, I've talked to Maddie um, a lot about the, um, the position in and of itself, but I've also met with representatives throughout the past couple weeks to talk about um, kind of what they see the job to be and what policies they want to advocate on council next year. Yeah, so in the past, uh, the vice president has really been the facilitator, uh, as these guys said, of you know, how things run in council, making sure everything's going smoothly. Uh, so if elected vice president, I'd really like to expand that role. Uh, we've had a lot of conversations this year on council about how we want institutional reforms uh, to make things more uh, responsive in real time, so it's actually, actually going on on campus. Uh, right now, YCC sets our agenda you know, in the summer. We work on those projects the entire year and don't really do a lot in looking at what's going on on campus and responding to that uh, as quickly as possible. So we've talked about getting meetings for um, you know, just the council representatives with uh, mediated by the vice president. Um, so I'd really like to see those happen specifically so we can look at what's happening on campus and make those policy projects uh, in real time. Uh, so I believe I'm best equipped to do this for three reasons. Uh, the first being that I have a lot of personal productive relationships with members of YCC and more importantly those who are running for YCC next year uh, and a lot of them have already been elected to council through uncontested races. Um, so those relationships are already there and would be very helpful if I'm elected. Um, I also think that the scope of my projects are, are a little wider than some of the other candidates and that's necessary for a vice president. Um, and can I get like 10 more seconds? Yeah. All right. <laughs> Sure. So, I mean, I just think, um, I feel that I have just a really large familiarity with just the council as a whole, and especially the role of the vice president. Um, in terms of just experience, I mean, I've just done so much for the council in the past, and as director of the dining task force, I was actually in charge of coordinating little mini projects, I suppose, like everyone on the task force was in charge of talking about, okay, you're going to be talking about um, nutritional resources, you're going to be talking about dining hall hours. Um, I've had that experience with coordinating people in the past, and that's pretty much what the role of vice president does currently. Um, I'd, also, I'd also like to point out my um, sort of counterbalance proposal, or my check and balance proposal um, for the past. I'd also like th for the role of the vice president maybe to wane a little bit. Um, I think the council needs to be empowered and representatives need to be empowered to actually represent. Um, and to have one person with a lot of concentrated power and control over what projects um, representatives are doing, um, I think it betrays that mission a little bit. So 
I would imagine having representative only meetings. Um, I don't believe the vice president should actually be present there. They should just have their own independent moderator. And I really feel that the council, can, that the vice president can empower the council in ways that it has been in the past. Great, thank you. Um, in our last part, um, is questions from the audience. So we will take two questions. Um, and please specify who you're directing these to, if they're to all the candidates or specific. And we have to limit it to two because of the time. And each of the candidates, you should know that you all have one rebuttal left, and so if there's something you'd add, like to add to the question, there's not going to be able to do it. Um, hello. Um, yeah, I guess this would be to any of the three candidates that didn't mention Yale's sexual climate. Um, so what would you do to improve Yale's sexual climate? Why doesn't everyone take a step at that? <laughs> and you all have one minute to respond. And... Um, let's start with um, Awesome. So um, one of my proposals for uh, improving Yale sexual climate is to um, create a task force um, looking into it. Um, as we've seen this past uh, year, task forces can do um, great work in um, really listening to student voices and finding ways that we can um, reform uh, large issues here on campus. Um, and so that task force would look at things like um, improving um, uh, clarity and transparency about the systems that are um, that are in place right now for um, dealing with um, uh, dealing with cases of sexual misconduct. Um, they would uh, it could look at um, you know reforming UWC procedures. Um, and um, I think through this we would really be able to um, to hear you know student concerns um, on the issue and ensure that we are tackling all sides of it. Um, just because um, this is, um, as you said, um, such, such an important issue on campus now. Great, so uh, the first thing I'd like to do is establish official YCC partnerships uh, with important student organizations such as USA, the Women's Center, and the CCEs to promote events teaching students about how to promote a safe sexual climate. Um, kind of uh, in that same vein, I think it's really important to expand the CCE training so we have uh, training specific, specifically focusing on gray areas, on matters of consent, or at least that have been excused as gray areas, things like um, sex well under the influence, sex among long-term or intimate partners, and things like that. Because I think that's where a lot of the issues arise, um, where, we, where we could really use some clarity on the student body. Um, I'd also like to work with, um, like I said, uh, establishing the electronic system for uh, creating Title IX appointments and things like that. Um, and also working with the YCC to, to officially endorse um, simple resource, she resource sheets uh, that can go up in all the dining halls about UWC procedures um, and things like that that have been actually already created by two organizations uh, that just aren't really publicized by YCC whatsoever. So. Um, oh, oh, you should. Yeah, we're just going down the line. <laughs> it's all good. Were you the one who mentioned it? What's that? We uh, can do, but we can do okay, all okay. candidates. Yeah. To the no, yeah, that's not But anyway. Um, so yeah, I think um, over the next year the YCC can definitely play more of a supporting role um, when it comes to uh, sexual assault services on campus. Um, I feel like the YCC should not necessarily be um, controlling the conversation. I think our main mission is to support student groups um, in a way that uh, empowers them and facilitates um, their conversations with the administrators. So it shouldn't necessarily be YCC as the most active member of these things, but we should be engaging with, you say, we should be engaging with um, the LGBTQ co-op because, I mean, if, we've read, if you've read that report, if it was alarming to see the statistics of sexual assault, it was incredibly alarming to see the statistics of sexual assault on trans and, non and gender non-binary students. Um, I think there's a lot of ways the council needs to refashion the way it engages with these groups. It shouldn't be about trying to control the situation. It should be about support for the groups that already exist. Um, and that's something that we haven't necessarily seen in the past, and I'd like to really emphasize in the future by having liaisons to these groups, by, ha by not forcing them to come to us, but by having the council go to them. Yes. Um, I agree with Kevin here. I definitely believe it's YCC's position to um, be there as a, a way of not controlling the situation, so to say, but be there more of a, a, an information bank site. Kind of, I want to expand the CCE program in the sense of having it have more real life scenarios. We all sat through the training, we all saw kind of the ridiculous video, and um, I, I really feel like we can make it more real life and have those, those gray areas filled as well. Um, with regards to working with um, administration with Yale Health, making those services more available as well, uh, I definitely agree in the sense of building a task force um, of the leaders of these organizations, the LBQT um, and, and other organizations to, to really have the representation there within the YCC so that um, 
the support, um, the victims of sexual assault here at Yale don't have to feel afraid. They don't have to feel like they're being mistreated, and they don't have to feel that they're being underrepresented. And, yeah, we're going to make it. Great. Do we have any other questions from the audience? Yes, please. Uh, to all the voting candidates, do you believe that the credibility deficit exists between YCC and communities of color in student activities on campus? And if so, how do you envision the YCC improving that degree of engagement through uh, empowering and supporting cultural centers and communities of color on campus? And now it's time to lose. Yeah. So I absolutely believe that credibility gap exists. Um, not just with students of color. I think that there's a lot of areas where YCC's really dropped the ball on some of the big campus issues. Uh, divestment only being one of them that's really getting changed without any of our intervention whatsoever. Uh, so in order to kind of fix that, um, in my policy platform I propose creating a fourth policy wing of YCC, uh, just dedicated solely to diversity and inclusion, um, because I believe that a lot of these projects fall within gray areas of YCC policy. You know, things like more funding for the cultural centers, for example, are kind of between university services and between student life. Uh, so I think creating this fourth wing of, of uh, policy for YCC <laughs> with a dedicated diversity and inclusion director will help give these projects the attention they need uh, by assigning a dedicated representative to each of those projects. Um, I also, in my uh, Juan Yale project, part of it is uh, creating a, or at least, um, inviting the cultural centers to create a sort of cultural council where they can talk amongst themselves about things that are happening on campus pertaining to diversity and inclusion issues and then bring their concerns to the YCC in a formal capacity. So that's a little bit bold to establish in one year, uh, but I'd like to at least lay out the blueprint for collaboration with those groups over time. Yeah, I feel much the same way as Luis. I think there definitely is a credibility gap when it comes to the YCC's relationship to cultural centers and students of color. Um, I feel as though, I'd like to reiterate the point that I kind of made previously, in that the YCC's role, again, should not be um, telling you know, communities of color, come to YCC meetings, come to, our, you know, come to this, come to this conversation. We should be the ones going to cultural centers. We should be going to their events. We should be engaging with the cultural house directors. We should be, um, we should be this organization that listens and supports. We can't be this organization that tries to dictate policy, that tries to govern. We need to be a student service organization um, and make sure that all voices are heard, no matter um, no matter the circumstance. Um, I definitely feel that there's just been a deficit over the last year, and I think uh, the events of last semester have made that painfully obvious. Um, so my commitment to YCC would be to um, have liaisons to each of the cultural centers um, that would often, that would go to not just, not just like any sort of meetings, but like events, engage with um, students who actually go to these cultural centers, and make sure that their voices are accurately represented on the council. Um, yeah, so I just want to clarify a little bit about the Wanyel project since it was kind of touched on by Kevin. Uh, so the, the idea is not to go to the centers and say, hey, you know, we're YCC, we're going to control you now, come to our meetings. That's, that's the last thing we want to do. Uh, we want to go and invite them to create this process over time of sort of self-governance um, and to give them an institutionalized way to bring their concerns to us. You know, we want to let them know at this point where it's really crucial on campus right now. Um, that the YCC is listening uh, and empowering. You know, we want to give them this formal way to bring their concerns to us um, and let them know that we truly care about making them feel included on campus. Great job. Awesome. Um, yeah, I, I would like to uh, create a position on the YCC board, of, um, board of um, student diversity affairs, in the sense of having somebody there that would really represent the cultural houses and the uh, African American community here. Um, I've, I've talked to a couple people around campus that are in these, these um, organizations, La Casa, um, the African American Cultural Center, and such, and uh, I've listened to their concerns. I, I have plans to kind of meet the needs of um, these centers with regards to you know, creating more classes for Native and Latin American culture and uh, history, um, and really kind of increasing diversity among uh, the, the faculty um, with regards to uh, diversity. Um, but yeah, I, I do believe there's a critical gap here. I definitely would like to uh, to fill that and work with work with the centers to promote their, their mission and their goals and really have them there um, on the board as a position. Christopher? Um, so I uh, also agree that um, there's a credibility deficit there between um, the YCC and um, communities of color. Um, the YC is pretty homogenous. Um, we don't represent all uh, communities on campus, um, and we also, that includes um, students of color. We don't always represent students of color on um, the cultural houses. Um, and I'm uh, kind of making that a center point of my campaign um, through uh, kind of my creation, uh, hopefully, of uh, the director of student outreach, who would serve as, you know, one of these, uh, as this point person, along with the president and vice president, 
um, to communities um, that are not always um, representative on, represented on council to make sure that um, no students fall through the cracks. Um, however, I think that it's also important that the Yale College Council take steps institutionally to improve um, race issues at our campus at large, um, which is why I'm proposing um, uh, uh, diversity training during Camp Yale, which I mentioned earlier, um, a deficit in the current programming, and uh, we'll fight for uh, the elevation of the ethnicity, race, and migration program to uh, departmental status. Thank you. I think we can look at that. Yes. Yeah, so I'd just like to uh, make a kind of push back on the idea of a singular uh, director of student outreach. Um, there are 300 student groups on this campus in excess of that number, actually. I think having a singular director of student outreach who's responsible solely for just engaging with all these groups might be a little bit difficult. Um, and if we're going, talking specifically about um, the cultural houses, I think like having one person who the cultural houses have to share with the rest of the student body might be, is just totally inefficient and really wouldn't actually like, um, I really wouldn't actually be able to affect positive change. That's why I believe that we should have individual representatives serve as these liaisons. I don't think there should be like one central executive board position. Um, a lot of our representatives um, do often engage with student groups outside of the YCC, um, and it's fair and it's fair to assume that like they can accurately represent the wishes of those of those groups. Yes. Uh, let me clarify on what I meant by that. The sense of having a director for um, student diversity affairs, it's the sense of that person is in charge of a larger group. It's not one person to represent all the groups here at Yale, of course, that's ridiculous. And the sense that I want to create more of a director position so that they have a panel, that they have the voice of every single um, organization that we have here. You know, if you want to send a representative from Acosta, you want to send a representative from um, the African American House, absolutely, send it forward. And then we're going to have that director position to then relate to the council their needs and demands. Not one singular person to cover. And I'll use my um, so I'm actually going to push back again on Kevin. Um, so actually in the YCC Constitution as it stands, um, one of the jobs of representatives and um, of outsiders is to form, uh, people not on council, is to form focus groups who um, would reach out um, to individuals that are not necessarily represented on council to groups that are not rep necessarily represented. Um, and since the YCC hasn't done that um, recently, it obviously um, is apparent that that system doesn't work because it doesn't exist, um, even though it's supposed to. Um, so that's why I Ideally, through the creation of the Director of Student Outreach, we would have an individual who would be solely focused on this because representatives are uh, working on projects, they're um, reaching out to their uh, residential colleges, um, and the President and Vice President are doing all sorts of advocacy. Um, so this would be just another person who would be solely dedicated to this outreach. Great. Thank you, Vice President. And the next.